What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty P here with another episode of Steel's Warm, our series where we put you into the minds of Omar Khan, Mike Tomlin, Andy Weidel, as they look to put together a winning roster in 2024 and beyond, a roster that can compete for a seventh Lombardi trophy. All right, so we're now complete with the NFL Combine. Everyone's aware of that, the NFL Scouting Combine. Time for an updated offensive line rankings coming out of the Combine. That's right, offensive tackles, guards, centers, the works. We're all going to cover it off super quick on this show. But as a reminder, if you like our content, hit that like button. It tells me which type of content you're liking. I do vary up our content, whether it's topic focus, how I put the format of the video together. Equally, if you're enjoying our content, you're not a subscriber, hit that bell icon, hit that sub button. Then you get all our alerts. And we're going to be doing more live shows now. We've gotten through Combine between now and free agency and then a few more lives as well. Um, get back into a steady rhythm of things after free agency too. Lots of news to come on this on this channel. Lots of pre-draft content, all things team building, all things Steelers, all things fan focused. All right. So let's crack right into the offensive lineman. Let's cover it off super quickly for everyone out there trying to try and do a lot of positions in a very short space of time. 20 guys, my top 20 guys across all three positions, not ranked in order. They ranked in order of the positions, not ranked in total order of prospect. Center. Let's kick off there because that makes the most sense. That's the clearest one. Let's start small, get into the big stuff. So Jackson Powers Johnson it did everything right at the combine. Number one still. Zach Frazier had a very good combine. I thought his bench was off the chart. Surprised me at 30, 30 to 31 reps. Really good performance from Zach Frazier. Again, I think Cedric Van Pran did pretty well at the combine too. He's also listed as Cedric Van Pran Granger, I should say, as well, in terms of his official combine name. But the center order has not changed. There are some guys vying below that. But really, if you're the Pittsburgh Seals, and, and I remember what the majority of our people on this channel that support us, our uh, Pittsburgh Steel fans, if you're looking at what the Steelers are going to do, these are three guys they need to get early if they're going to use draft other free agency to, to get a center. Other than these three guys, you're starting to get pretty risky. Now, the next guy position we're going to look at is down in terms of the guard position. Graham Barton is the consensus top inside line, interior line guy that's not a center, the guard position. Christian Haynes out of UConn. I've put Cooper Beebe in here. Um, now, I know that um, there are some um, Steelers podcaster, uh, podcasters out there that see him as a center. Fine. Maybe he's buying for third or fourth guy there. But right now, listed guard, interior guy. I've got him there at three. Then I've got Lamia there out of Utah at four, followed by Christian Mahogany and Zach Zinter. Sorry, I forgot I should have put Michigan up there. Um, but Zach Zinter out of Michigan. I like Zach Zinter. I like what I see on tape. I just do. Um, I think that when you go back and look at Michigan's plays, he always seems to be in thick things. And that tells me a lot about a prospect as well when they're tape. Um, but that's who I'm seeing right now. Guard position is not really a priority for the Steelers in the first three or four rounds. So this is less of a discussion. But let's say anyone from Cooper um, downwards falls. Maybe the Steelers go get it, especially if they've traded back in the draft, or especially if they've moved Deontay on for a second. Um, and something else. Maybe they want to trade back into the draft because they like a guy. Who knows? It is all about getting better with this team. So that's why I've included guard. It would be remiss not to do that. Now, offensive tackles. There's a name up the top, which probably some people would have already written their comment by the time I got here because I talked about center and guard first. I have Tulisi Fawaga as my top prospect. Last year, I had Broderick Jones as my top prospect, not Darnell Wright. Um, there's one other tackle that was taken before him as well. Oh, Skaronski, but they moved him in. They kicked you into guard. That's not the guy that I've got. I have got Fawaga. Why, why, Matty, would you say this when Joe Alt's like six foot eight and not allowed a sack last year? Fawaga's only allowed one in the last two years. Because Fawaga has versatility. Fawaga can play left, right, guard as well. Joe Alt is pretty much stuck at that tackle spot at the left tackle. I also just think Fawaga overall will end up being a better prospect. That is how I feel about it. People might argue with me that I'm blue in the face. I then have Fashanu. I know he didn't have the best combine to what a lot of people thought. I know he had bad tape from Ohio State. I still think he's the better guy there. I do think Mims had a wonderful combine. The only thing for Mims over Fashanu is that I think, again, Fashanu, you could kick him in if you had to for whatever reason into guard. You probably wouldn't, though. I don't know why you would go do that. But... And Amaris Mims is more of a right tackle than he is a left tackle. The other thing about Amaris Mims, too, out of Georgia, I love his height, I love his athleticism, is that because he is that right tackle, moves a little bit down that versatility and the experience. He's played, you know, a lot less games than some of these other top prospects. Then 
JC Latham, he's a good tackle prospect. He is a plug and play right tackle. I then have Fatanu, who Daniel Jeremiah um, has quite much more up this list ahead of some of these guys that was going into the combine. For Fatanu, is another guy that can kick inside. I don't like him in the Steelers because I do think he'll be a better inside guy at the next level, um, which is interesting context because we've talked about interior guys. Um, but so, but he's got versatility. He's a great prospect out of Washington. You can't put that past him. He's there. Now, I think Morgan has elevated himself through his testing at the Combine. I quite like what I see from him as well. Um, and he's out of Arizona. I'm yet to be convinced of whether he's specifically a left or a right tackle. I think he's versatile across both, to be honest. Um, but I think he's done better than Guyton. Guyton's fallen down my list since the senior bowl for sure. I think in terms of the second round, it's pretty much Morgan, Guyton, and and and, and Patrick Paul could be taken any time in that early second round or make scrape it into the first. Probably Paul doesn't make it into the first, doesn't have that grade. But I do like Paul in the second round if the Steelers go center or cornerback or wide receiver um, or even D lineman in the first round. I do like Paul there. Um, at 51 or even later if you are flipping Deontay for a second pick. I then have my guy Christian Jones um, and then Sal Mattia out of BYU. Now, there are a couple of people, I will be honest, a couple of players vying for these last few spots. Very hard off testing at the combine on an O-lineman. I am very high on Christian Jones. I do think he's worthy of a third-round pick um, or a fourth-round pick. I also have this in rankings in terms of who I think will be a, well, must be ranked as a prospect coming out, but when drafted, who's going to perform? And I easily see Christian Jones as a top 10 tackle out of this draft. Um, I really hope he has an awesome pro day and he can continue to elevate up these boards. He's done a lot for Texas while he was there. I also like Sal Mateo out of BYU um, Kingsley. I, I do think he can do a lot as well at the tackle position. Interestingly, um, in terms of these guys, almost everyone here is obviously um, makes it into the top 20 with NFL draft bars. Sal Mati is actually listed as their 10th best tackle. Patrick Paul is listed as their 12th best tackle. Um, sorry, offensive lineman, sorry, I should say, um, not tackles. So these guys are definitely up there. The other thing I thought would be mentioning after I'd, after I'd talk, spoken to you through my numbers and why I picked different guys there and ranked them this way, Daniel Jeremiah's top 50 prior to the combine. One interior own lineman, Chris, Chris Graham Barton, sorry, mentioned. He was number 34 in Daniel Jeremiah's top 50, 2.0. Center, Jackson Powers Johnson was 29th, and, and uh, Zach Frazier was 32nd. There were nine of the tackles that you see on your screen right now with alt number one ninth picked. But sorry, yeah, there's, so there were eight tackles of the 11 you see there that were in Daniel Jeremiah's top 50, which is pretty much literally the top eight that you've got there. Different orders for some of them. Um, but for Wagner in at, no, at number three, I think it was beside, behind Fashano and Alt. Um, but Mims is certainly rising up the boards. But it is interesting when you think about it like this, that there are 11 players on the 20 here that are in Daniel Jeremiah's top 50. That is huge when you think about two rounds being 62, uh, sorry, 64 picks, 50 players on that. You've got literally 11, 12 of them alignment. Really cool for the Steelers in a year that we need a tackle and a center. Couldn't be better. That is why trading back more picks in the first three rounds, trading Deontay Johnson, making other movements is absolutely key unless you're going up and getting a guy that's plug and play for the next decade. But anyway, still fans, you let me know in the comments do you, and, and anyone else watching this as well from the other NFL teams or in terms of who are the fits for you guys because that could affect the Steelers. Like Jackson Bowers Johnson's probably off the board to Seattle for example. Um, but you let me know in the comments who you like on this list, who do you not. Am I completely insane for putting Fawaga first? Am I insane for putting Joe Walt second? Should Mims be ahead of Fashanu? On terms of center, is Cedric Frampran closing the gap on Zach Frazier? On the interior, guys, is there a guy there that you really like that's not across my list right now? Anyway, you let me know in the comments. We'll be back with more content throughout the week on Steelers Touchdown Under. As always, go Steelers.